In this video, I want to show you how you can access data from the American Community Survey, which is run by the Census Bureau, so that you can get sociodemographic data that you might join to an existing uh, shapefile like the one you see here. So what I have here is a data set consisting of census tracts. And if I wanted to add additional attributes or variables to those tracts, I would need to um, first go to Google Chrome in Virtual Lab and search Social Explorer, which is a website that CC has a membership to. And once you're there, you can click on Tables. And we're going to be using the American Community Survey. It's, it's a sample of the US done each year, and then they aggregate those samples over, in this case, five years in order to develop estimates. Um, the reason we use that data is that there's a lot more uh, data and variables included in that data than you would find in the decennial census, which is only done every 10 years. So what you can see here is they've got the 2015 to 2019 five-year estimate available. We'll begin a report. And this is a critical juncture where you want to select the correct geographic type. So if you think about what our data set consists of, this example is using census tracts in and around the Denver urban area. So you'd want to set this to census tract. If your data set consisted of some other aggregation, let's say it was counties or states, then you would want to select that particular geographic type. Okay. Now in this case, all of our census tracts actually reside in the state of Colorado. So I can just select all census tracts in Colorado. It doesn't matter that there's more data that I'm going to have, but when I join it, it'll only join to the census tracts that I have. Um, if you have a data set that consists of tracts or counties that span more than two states, you'll need to uh, make adjustments and then add those selections as well. So you'll proceed to tables. And you can see there's a lot of different variables here. I'm just going to focus in on a few. Um, and even then, I'm going to kind of uh, just do an abbreviated version. I, I like to get Hispanic or Latino by race. Add that. Um, I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to add median household income. And I'm going to do the poverty rate. Specifically, I like to do ratio of income to poverty level summarized it too. Add that. Again, there are a lot of other variables that one could consider depending on one's project. So you'll just show results and you can get a sense of each of those variables and how they're broken down. Um, but you'll go to data download. I like to recommend selecting these particular uh, buttons for uh, column labels in the first row and then output percents. So you don't, you don't just get the raw numbers or estimates of raw numbers, you get the actual percents as well. And then we'll select census tract data CSV. When that's done downloading, you'll open it up in Excel. Uh, I'm going to right click on the number two over here to get rid of this second row that's not needed. And then I'm going to double put the cursor between A and B and double click to expand that. And that'll just be FIPS and then I'll just tab over. I like to get rid of all of these unnecessary columns, right click and delete. And then just uh, go through each of these. This is total population. I call that pop tote. I'm not going to use this one. I'm going to stick with white NH, black NH. Just going to grab some, some of these. Uh, you might want to keep many more of these um, breakdowns. Latinx. Uh, I'm just doing a very quick version for this tutorial. So I would get rid of those columns. And then you get into the percentage variables of those. So you'd see here's uh, percent white non-Hispanic. Notice I'm using P instead of the um, inter instead of the symbol for percent. Uh, P black NH for percent black non-Hispanic. Uh, P Asian NH. So on. And then here's the P Latinx. Again, get rid of all the columns you're not using. You'd want to be very careful and thoughtful about which ones you get rid of. Uh, MHI for median household income. Here's POV status. This is the number of people we know the status of. They're poor or they're not. So I'll call that POV stat. And here's the number who are below poverty. I call POV below. And then here's a percentage variable. Percent impoverished, I always just go with P POV to keep it short. Get rid of all these others. Okay, so that was quick, um, but that's how you get it clean. What you'll notice is very simple variable names at the top, just one row, and then the data. And I've got the 
FIPS values uh, column expanded so that you can see the entire FIPS. So then I would do file save as, and we're going to browse for our folder location. I'm going to put it in my just my general play folder, um, not inside of the geo database like I've been saving shapefiles. So in this case, I'm just going to call this ACS19 uh, Colorado Tracks. Hit save. And then you need to close Excel because uh, a lot of times ArcGIS does not like it when a data set is up somewhere else. So then in your uh, ArcGIS Pro, you should be able to go to Catalog. And if I click on the folders, what I'm looking for is that ACS data. Now, I don't see it right now, but if I go to these three lines, the menu, and click Refresh, you can see that it's now available in there. Okay, So then I can just click and drag it into my GIS, and it's available for joining, which I'll show in another video.